Top 25 Lab Technician Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly asked during lab technician interviews. These questions are designed to assess both technical knowledge and practical skills relevant to the role. We will also provide insightful answers to help you prepare effectively. By understanding these questions and responses, you can enhance your confidence and increase your chances of success in landing a lab technician position. 1. Tell me about your educational background and how it relates to this role. I hold a bachelor's degree in biochemistry, where I gained a solid foundation in molecular biology and laboratory techniques. My coursework focused on analytical methods, including chromatography and spectrophotometry, which are essential for this role. Additionally, I completed an internship in a research lab, where I applied my knowledge in real-world experiments and developed skills in data analysis. This combination of formal education and hands-on experience equips me to contribute effectively to your team and adapt quickly to new challenges in the laboratory environment. 2. What experience do you have working in a laboratory setting? I have significant experience working in a laboratory setting, primarily within a research environment. My role involved conducting experiments, analyzing samples, and collaborating with a team to achieve project goals. I was responsible for preparing reagents, maintaining equipment, and adhering to safety protocols. This experience sharpened my technical skills and enabled me to understand the importance of teamwork in achieving precise results. I am familiar with various laboratory techniques, which I utilize to support research initiatives effectively, ensuring quality and integrity in all stages of the experiments. 3. What lab equipment are you most familiar with? I am most familiar with various lab equipment, including centrifuges, spectrophotometers, pipettes, and incubators. I have extensive experience using centrifuges for separating samples, ensuring optimal speed and time settings for specific applications. I regularly use spectrophotometers for measuring absorbance and concentration levels in solutions, which is crucial for quantitative analysis. My proficiency with pipettes includes both manual and electronic versions, allowing for precise measurements. I also have hands-on experience with incubators for cell culture work, maintaining appropriate temperature and humidity conditions for optimal growth. 4. How do you ensure proper safety protocols are followed in the lab? Ensuring proper safety protocols in the lab involves several key practices. First, I stay informed about the specific safety guidelines relevant to the lab's operations, including material safety data sheets, MSDS, for hazardous materials. I conduct regular training sessions for team members to reinforce the importance of safety measures. Additionally, I implement routine checks to ensure that personal protective equipment, PPE, is worn at all times. Open communication is vital, so I encourage team members to report any unsafe conditions immediately, fostering a culture of safety that prioritizes everyone's well-being. 5. Describe your approach to maintaining accurate and detailed records. Maintaining accurate and detailed records in a laboratory is crucial for reproducibility and compliance. I begin by establishing a systematic method for documenting all experimental procedures, results, and observations. Each entry is labeled with the date, time, and relevant identifiers for easy retrieval. I utilize electronic lab notebooks when possible, as they provide a structured format and reduce the risk of human error. Regularly reviewing records ensures consistency and addresses any discrepancies promptly. Training team members on proper documentation practices reinforces a culture of accuracy and accountability in the lab. 6. How do you prioritize tasks when working on multiple projects? When managing multiple projects, I start by assessing deadlines and the complexity of each task. I create a priority list based on urgency and importance, ensuring that critical deadlines are met without compromising quality. I utilize tools such as project management software to track progress and set reminders. Regular communication with team members is essential, allowing for adjustments based on unforeseen challenges. By remaining flexible and focused, I can efficiently allocate resources and time, ensuring that all projects receive the attention they require to achieve successful outcomes. 7. What steps do you take to prevent contamination in the lab? Preventing contamination in the lab is critical for ensuring accurate results. I begin by adhering to strict personal hygiene, such as wearing gloves, lab coats, and masks when necessary. I regularly sanitize work surfaces and equipment before and after use. I also implement aseptic techniques, especially when working with cell cultures or sensitive samples. Additionally, I minimize open containers and avoid cross-contamination by using dedicated tools for different samples. Regular training and reminders for all lab members about contamination risks are essential to maintain a sterile environment. 8. Can you explain the importance of quality control in laboratory work? Quality control, QC is essential in laboratory work as it ensures that results are accurate, reliable, and reproducible. 
implementing QC measures helps identify errors early, minimizes variability, and maintains the integrity of data. This process involves regular calibration of equipment, standardizing procedures, and conducting routine checks on samples. QC not only safeguards against faulty results but also upholds regulatory compliance and builds trust with stakeholders. By prioritizing quality control, laboratories can facilitate better decision-making and enhance scientific research outcomes. 9. How do you stay updated with the latest advancements in laboratory techniques? To stay updated with the latest advancements in laboratory techniques, I regularly read scientific journals and articles related to my field. I also attend webinars and workshops where experts discuss emerging trends and technologies. Networking with colleagues and participating in professional organizations provide valuable insights and opportunities for learning. Additionally, I follow relevant online forums and social media groups, which often share innovative techniques and best practices. This continuous learning approach helps me remain informed and enhances my skills in the laboratory. 10. Describe a time when you had to troubleshoot a problem with lab equipment. When our centrifuge suddenly stopped working during a crucial experiment, I quickly assessed the situation. I checked the power supply and ensured the lid was properly closed. After confirming those were fine, I examined the settings and found that the speed was incorrectly configured. I recalibrated the settings and ran a test cycle. The centrifuge operated normally afterward, allowing us to complete our samples on time. This experience reinforced the importance of systematic troubleshooting and communication with the team to avoid disruptions in our workflow. 11. How do you ensure the accuracy of your pipetting techniques? To ensure the accuracy of my pipetting techniques, I follow several best practices. First, I always use calibrated pipettes and check their calibration regularly. I ensure that I choose the correct pipette size for the volume I'm measuring to minimize errors. Additionally, I practice proper pipetting techniques, such as pre-wetting the tip, holding the pipette vertically, and using a smooth and steady motion when dispensing. Regular training and self-assessment help me maintain my skills. Finally, I document my pipetting results and conduct periodic checks by measuring known standards for verification. 12. What experience do you have with Laboratory Information Systems, LIS? In my previous roles, I have worked extensively with Laboratory Information Systems, LIS, for managing patient data and laboratory workflows. I am proficient in utilizing LIS for tracking samples, managing test orders, and generating reports. My experience includes training team members on LIS functionalities and troubleshooting any issues that arise. I understand the importance of data integrity and compliance with regulatory standards, ensuring that all entries are accurate and timely. This experience has enhanced my ability to streamline lab operations and improve communication within the lab and with external stakeholders. 13. How would you handle a situation where a colleague is not following safety protocols? In such a situation, I would first approach the colleague privately and express my concerns about their actions, emphasizing the importance of safety protocols in maintaining a secure working environment. I would encourage open dialogue, allowing them to share their perspective. If the behavior continues, I would document specific incidents and report them to a supervisor or safety officer. Ensuring a safe lab environment is crucial, and addressing non-compliance respectfully can help foster a culture of safety and accountability within the team. 14. Describe your experience with data analysis and interpretation. In my previous role, I worked extensively with statistical software to analyze experimental data. I utilized tools such as R and Python for data manipulation and visualization, allowing me to identify trends and draw meaningful conclusions from complex datasets. My experience includes interpreting results from various assays, ensuring accuracy in the findings, and presenting data clearly to stakeholders. I have also collaborated with team members to refine analytical methods, enhancing our approach to data-driven decision-making in research projects. This experience has equipped me with a strong analytical foundation relevant to this role. 15. How do you maintain focus and attention to detail during repetitive tasks? Maintaining focus during repetitive tasks involves implementing structured routines and breaks. I utilize techniques such as the Pomodoro method, where I work in focused intervals followed by short breaks. This approach minimizes fatigue and helps me stay engaged. Additionally, I pay close attention to the specifics of each task, actively checking for consistency and accuracy. I also find that keeping a clean and organized workspace reduces distractions, enabling me to concentrate better. Engaging in mindfulness exercises before starting can further enhance my focus on the task at hand. 16. What strategies do you use to collaborate effectively with other lab members? Effective collaboration in a lab setting begins with open communication, 
I prioritize regular meetings to discuss project updates and challenges, ensuring everyone is on the same page. I actively listen to my colleagues' ideas and suggestions, fostering an environment where all contributions are valued. Utilizing collaborative tools, such as shared digital platforms, helps streamline data sharing and documentation. I also encourage a culture of mutual respect and support, which enhances team dynamics and drives productivity. Building relationships based on trust allows us to tackle complex projects together more efficiently. 17. How would you explain complex scientific concepts to non-technical stakeholders? When explaining complex scientific concepts to non-technical stakeholders, I focus on simplicity and clarity. I start by identifying the key points that are essential for understanding the topic. Using analogies and relatable examples helps bridge the gap between technical jargon and everyday experiences. Visual aids, such as diagrams or charts, can simplify intricate processes and make them more accessible. I encourage questions, ensuring that stakeholders feel comfortable engaging in the discussion. This interactive approach fosters understanding and builds trust, making scientific information more approachable. 18. Describe your experience with preparing samples for analysis. In my previous role as a laboratory technician, I routinely prepared samples for various analyses, including chemical assays and microbiological tests. This involved carefully following standard operating procedures to ensure sample integrity. I utilized techniques like dilution, centrifugation, and filtration, adapting methods based on the specific requirements of each analysis. Attention to detail was crucial, as even minor errors could affect results. I also collaborated with team members to confirm sample readiness, ensuring efficient workflow and accuracy throughout the process. 19. How do you ensure the proper calibration and maintenance of laboratory instruments? To ensure proper calibration and maintenance of laboratory instruments, I follow a systematic approach. First, I adhere to the manufacturer's guidelines for calibration schedules and procedures. Regularly, I conduct checks to verify that instruments are functioning correctly, documenting any discrepancies. I also maintain an organized log of maintenance activities, including dates and specific actions taken. Additionally, I collaborate with colleagues to share insights on best practices and keep abreast of any advancements in calibration techniques, enhancing accuracy and reliability in our results. 20. What steps would you take in case of a chemical spill in the lab? In the event of a chemical spill, the first step is to assess the situation and ensure personal safety by wearing appropriate protective equipment. Next, I would immediately alert colleagues and supervisor about the spill while following the lab's emergency protocol. I would then contain the spill using absorbent materials designed for the specific chemical involved, avoiding any direct contact. After containing the spill, I would clean the area carefully, disposing of the waste according to hazardous waste guidelines. Lastly, I would document the incident, including the nature of the spill, actions taken, and any potential exposure to ensure proper reporting and prevent future incidents. 21. How do you handle constructive criticism or feedback on your work? Receiving constructive criticism is an essential part of professional growth. I approach feedback with an open mind, recognizing it as an opportunity to improve. When I receive feedback, I listen carefully and ask clarifying questions to fully understand the points being made. I take notes to reflect on the suggestions later. Implementing the feedback into my work helps me enhance my skills and performance. I also believe in following up with the person who provided the feedback to discuss any changes made and seek additional input, fostering a culture of open communication. 22. Describe your experience with documenting and following standard operating procedures, SOPs. In my previous role, I regularly documented procedures and adhered strictly to standard operating procedures, SOPs. This involved creating clear, concise documentation for each experiment, ensuring accuracy and consistency in methodologies. I also participated in regular training sessions where we reviewed SOPs to keep everyone updated on necessary changes. By following these procedures meticulously, I contributed to maintaining high-quality results and compliance with regulatory standards, which is crucial in a laboratory environment. 23. How do you stay organized when managing multiple samples or experiments? Staying organized in a lab environment requires a systematic approach. I utilize a combination of digital tools and physical methods. I keep a detailed lab notebook for each project, ensuring all experiments, results, and observations are documented clearly. I also use labeling systems for samples, including color coding and barcodes, to easily track their status. A digital calendar helps me schedule experiments and deadlines, allowing me to allocate time efficiently. Regularly reviewing my progress and adjusting priorities based on project needs also contributes to maintaining organization. 24. 
What experience do you have with molecular biology techniques, if any? In my previous role as a research assistant, I gained hands-on experience with several molecular biology techniques. I regularly performed PCR to amplify DNA segments, ensuring high specificity and yield. Additionally, I assisted in gel electrophoresis for analyzing DNA fragments, which enhanced my understanding of molecular weight and purity assessment. My experience also includes cloning and sequencing, where attention to detail was crucial for successful results. I collaborated with team members to troubleshoot issues, refining protocols and improving efficiency in our experiments. This background has prepared me well for challenges in molecular biology. 25. How would you contribute to maintaining a positive and collaborative lab environment? Creating a positive and collaborative lab environment starts with clear communication and mutual respect among team members. I would actively participate in team meetings, encouraging open discussions where everyone can share ideas and concerns. I believe in recognizing and celebrating individual contributions, which helps build morale. Additionally, I would promote a culture of support, where team members feel comfortable asking for help or offering assistance. By fostering an atmosphere of trust and inclusivity, I can help ensure that everyone feels valued and motivated to contribute their best efforts. In this video, we've explored the top 25 lab technician interview questions and their answers, equipping you with the knowledge to excel in your next interview. Understanding these questions not only prepares you for potential scenarios but also boosts your confidence in showcasing your skills and experiences. Preparation is key to making a great impression. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Your support helps us continue to provide valuable resources for your career journey. Thank you for watching.